Coming to the third and final vision presentation, um, I name I the, the presentation um, Eggs and Beyond, and as I've got a whole section on Beyond um, in here. Um, this is an amalgamation of, of the input from the committee, and I will admit my own uh, concepts and, and, and ideas on it. Um, but we haven't ever talked about so far the purpose of visioning. Why do we, why do, we do this? Um, you know, in part of the process, uh, we need to identify what we value today and describe what we want to be in the future. Um, and from that, develop a consensus on what to change or to preserve. Can't keep everything. Um, and have an image of the future as the foundation, okay, for our planning that we're doing today. And we also need to step back and take a look at the big picture, okay, in, you know, we've divided things up into commodities thus far, but we really have to pull back from that as well and, and take a look at, you know, where does everything fit within the department and then from within the department, where do we fit in the larger scheme as well. Okay. And part of the process, engage the participants in the organization before defining the plan. And that's what this is today. Okay. We're going to have a conversation. I want to have a conversation on the, on, um, the items that are, you know, put forth today. So, visioning. We need time points. When? Are we talking about one to five years? Are we talking intermediate, five to ten? Or are we talking about ten to thirty years? You have to have endpoints and time points in visioning. Well, if we look at the Cal Strategic Plan, okay, and these are the major highlights from it, Cal Strategic Plan is obviously long term. Their vision is 2050. And I think we need to consider that as well okay, in our vision. And if we look through all of these, you can all read them. We can fit in just about all of them. We can all think of something where we could fit in these. Okay. The process. Where are we now? What vision can we develop? How do we get there? And did we actually get there? Okay, I've been here a long time. We've had multiple strategic plans over the decades. Did we ever actually get to them? And then, how do we keep evaluating this and moving forward? Today, we're going to talk about where we are now. And we're going to set the stage for a nascent vision. Okay, it's not final, it's the beginning. Eggs as a commodity, where are we now? Now, some of you are already very familiar with this uh, chart, okay, this table, right? Um, number of, uh, average number of layers during the year, eggs laid annually per year, eggs produced, and the value of production. Well, what you'll notice is the eggs produced keeps increasing in North Carolina. Okay. So production in North Carolina is increasing, <coughs> the number of eggs per hand is increasing. This is really from the genetics. Okay. What you may not know is about one third of all eggs are further processed into liquid. Okay. Uh, about only 5% of production is actually exported. So we consume what we're producing. Okay. Eggs as a commodity, what are the future trends right now? What are we, what are, you know, what pressures do we have? We have social pressures for cage-free production. Okay, a conversion from conventional cages to um, aviary housing, also called cage-free. Enriched colony housing, which is 
I'm viewing that as intermediate because it's still it's being phased out in the push for more uh, cage free, free range housing, male chick disposal. We don't talk about that much because it's not a pleasant subject. But we also produce a lot of male chicks that we the industry doesn't know what to do with. That is going to become a bigger issue in the future. What do we do with the male chicks? Emergence of diseases, I threw up um, avian influenza, it's a perennial problem. We, you know, every year we've got to deal with it, but that's not the only one. There are diseases that are going to pop up that we don't know are coming down the pike. Regulatory burden, these are some examples. Okay, um, the FDA Seminal Prevention Program, all right? That regulates biosecurity, your rodent program plan, monitoring of flocks, handling of eggs from the time of lay through the entire distribution chain. That's a regulatory burden that's not going to change. Okay. All of this means that training needs to continue. People have to be trained. <clears throat> the department, where are we now? Well, pretty much. We're at Ken Anderson when it comes to eggs. Okay. <coughs> uh, we look at our facilities. Okay, the Piedmont Research Station historically has been doing the um, layer management test for, for decades. House 8 at CEU, um, I put there approximately 900 birds. That's uh, it's designed for a specific purpose, um, single bird per cage. If you really wanted to stress it, you could put, stretch it. You could put two birds per cage. House 10, CEU, nine uh, floor pens. A quality laboratory. Again, we're dealing with Ken Anderson. Scott Hall Animal League. Yeah, we have some uh, cages okay, for laying hens and growing pullets. Not many. Deer sign, I'll get to that. Um, animal and poultry teaching unit, 32 floor pens. This is what we have to work with currently. Oh, I did forget the range, the four range pens. Pens, okay. Waste center. <coughs> Waste center, yeah. Okay. Curriculum, courses on the books. 